Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about tuning and how do we make that interesting? Production value. So first of all, I wanna just really quickly run through the basic way you tune a guitar, right? I have six strings, E, A, D, G, B, E, and I have a snark clip-on tuner right here that tunes through vibrations in the guitar, right? So if I hit the first, the lowest string, the low E string, right? You'll see that it's perfectly in tune. Now, if it wasn't that way, if it was down a little bit, you'll see that it's even registering a different note, and I can tune up until I get closer and closer and closer, and there it is, solid E, okay? Now the reason you always wanna tune up is because of the gears of the tuner. So the way the gears work, when you tune a tuning peg, you're turning one gear up, and it is in turn dragging another gear up to wind the string tighter or looser. Now if you go tighter, it'll get caught like this. If you go down, if you tune from like a, a sharp note down, what's happening is you're pushing down right here, finding the right note, and then over time, the other gear is gonna slowly degrade, and then it's gonna fall out of tune easier. Understanding a little bit more on how tuning works will give you a different perspective of the instrument and is just really helpful long term. So I just want to go over a few quick things. Now, the scale length of a guitar, right, is the distance between the nut and the bridge right here, the saddle where it goes into the guitar, right? So when you hit a guitar string, it vibrates until it stops. Now those vibrations are measured in things called hertz. A hertz is just how long it takes for one cycle to go through. And what we know as tuning in the Western world it depends on these hertz, and that's how guitars are kind of manufactured. So for instance, this A string right here, that is vibrating, assuming it's in tune, at 110 hertz. Now something you may have heard of is a term called A440, or concert pitch. What that is, this is kind of like something that most of the musical world has agreed on as a reference tone by which to tune everything else. There's actually like conspiracy videos on YouTube of why the musical community went with 440 instead of like a natural 432 or something like that, but we're just gonna assume that you're operating under normal world rules and you use A440, right? So a concert pitch on a guitar would actually be the third octave A, right? That's 440 hertz, 440 vibrations per second. And the cool thing scientifically is octaves are always doubled the previous octave. So this A is 110, the next octave A is 220, and the next octave A is 440. And each of these tones have uh, a couple ways you can measure them. You can measure them by hertz, but something that you may see on tuners and stuff uh, is a term called cents, right? So just like in American currency, there are 100 cents in a dollar. So this is like a unit of 100. So basically a tone or a semitone is gonna have 100 cents that is uh, belonging to that one note, right? So this is a C, right? Now I can go sharp 50 cents or flat 50 cents where a tuner will still register it as a C before I get to a C sharp. So there's a range that you can kind of measure each note. Now an interesting thing when you're talking about scale length is where the 12th fret is positioned. Now the way it works out is the 12th fret will be the exact center point but in the scale length, right? So that's gonna be an octave, and just how we talked about with hertz, that's where the uh, hertz double, right? So this A is 110, this is 220. Now you can see, what I'm really doing when I'm playing this, I'm not just playing a fret, what I'm doing is I'm pinching the string and only the bottom half of the string is vibrating now, right? So the way you kind of hold down any fret or you draw a different tone from a guitar is you're pinching, and the sound that you're hearing is the vibration of a string this thick vibrating at this length. That's why as you go up the fretboard, you're actually shortening the scale length, so not only this is vibrating. Shortened strings are gonna vibrate faster depending on their thickness and stuff too. So that's kinda how you get variations in pitch. Now there are a lot of different types of tuners that you can use, and a few of them are like, uh, like this is the Snark clip-on one. There's a lot of different types of clip-on ones. The Snark is nice because it's cheap and it's actually really accurate, which we're gonna find out in a shootout in a minute. This is going on the vibrations from the guitar. So it's recognizing how many hertz are vibrating and telling you which note it is. Another thing, if you have like a pickup or an electric guitar, you can get a pedal tuner or a rack mount tuner. And these are also known as being pretty accurate. This is a uh, Digitech HT2. Again, like the Peterson is kind of like the, 
the Cadillac of tuners because it's super accurate and it's also kind of expensive, but whatever. I mean, these kind of get by. Uh, another thing you can do is get one on your uh, like an app on your phone, and that's using the actual microphone on your phone to do it. And the downside with those is uh, extraneous noises and stuff can kind of affect it. The downside with the clip-on ones is some of the lower strings, especially if you have like a, like a seven string guitar or eight string guitar, or if you're in like a really severe drop tuning, the vibrations from a low, low vibrating string might not be able to be picked up by the clip-on ones. But usually in standard tuning, the clip-on ones are fine. I wanted to find out what was more accurate, the pedal tuner or the clip-on one. So I did a shootout and here are the results. Okay, so I've got the Snark headstock tuner on the head, and I also have it going through the Digitech Hardwire, and we're gonna do the same note tuned both ways. So I'm just gonna hit an open A string. And you can see that on the Snark, it's in perfect tune. Uh, it's right in the middle, not one way or another. There's no sense one way or another. But it's kind of quite a bit flat on the Hardwire. So let's tune it to the Hardwire pedal. Right, so now that's in perfect tune there. But the snark is just a little bit sharp. So let's take both of these and find out which one is the accurate one with the software program. Okay, so here are both tones. The one on the left is the snark and the one on the right is the hardwire. What I did is I ran through a program called Melodyne, which is a really reputable program that a lot of people use for auto-tuning, but it really gives you an accurate reference for what the notes are. So as you can see, the one on the left, the snark, is actually right on the money as far as that A string goes. And the hardwire one is actually five cents sharp. So I was kind of surprised. I thought the pedal tuner would be better, but the snark actually won this one. Now, one good way to check the quality of your instrument and the setup is by checking the intonation. And one good way that you can do that is checking the tuning of it open. So here's the open B string on my Taylor. All right, so the snark is saying that's in tune. Now, if I go to the 12th fret and do the same thing, you'll see that's also in tune. So open, 12. So this is a pretty well intonated guitar. Now, if you just do a quick check on any of your guitars, you might see a guitar that needs some work. You might need a setup done or you can actually intonate it yourself. There's a ton of videos online to help you do that. But that could be a reason why maybe your guitar doesn't sound good if you're playing in different parts. And maybe in some instances, it'll sound good up here, but it'll kind of sound bad the higher up the neck you play. And that's all intonation. So definitely check that out.